We said, what? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. As we have discussed before, human memories are highly unreliable and they're yeah. susceptible to being influenced and altered in all sorts of unexpected ways. At least, I think we've discussed that before. <laughs> in fact, there are a number of instances of us saying things on this show and then many of you have pointed out uh, that we've contradicted ourselves no. using previous episodes. No. So today, we're gonna lean into that. We're gonna test how well we can accurately remember things that we've said on GMM. It's time for, as humans, we have many faults, but will our memories turn out faults? Shout out to actor Christoph Waltz. You just rhyme faults with faults. That's right. But then Waltz. Waltz. Okay, here's That's what we're gonna do. Right. We've dug up some old GMM clips of one another in which we gave a strong opinion or belief about something very specific. And before we reveal each clip, we're gonna give each other the opportunity to try to remember what we said. And then we're gonna play the clip and see how great or terribly our memory has Mar served us. Mar you, don't know, you don't remember how to say memory? Memory has served us. This is also a competition, so the winner will receive a one of a kind Memory foam comb. Oh, that sounds nice. All right, I'm gonna test your memory first, okay? It's like a steel trap. Here we go, all right. Rhett, in May 2014. Oh, good month. You once proclaimed that no one should ever tweet using the hashtag blank life, mm -hmm. as in hashtag model life, hashtag musician life, hashtag big booty life. Oh yeah, that's so annoying. With one notable exception. Well, I'll accept one, but you actually gave three notable exceptions. If you can remember any one of those, I'll give you the point. I think this is somebody who what they do matters uh, matters more than all the people that just you just listed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and okay. uh, it's like notable, and people would actually want to know. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna yeah, go who back would, into that part who of my would brain. You wanna, right, go in that part of your brain. An astronaut. If you saw somebody tweet, okay, astronaut. Hashtag astronaut life. Oh, y'all laughing? That's a good answer. It must not be the right one, but I'm going with astronaut because it seems like something that like I would be into that. All right, let's go back to May 2014 and see if he remembers correctly. Don't hashtag anything with- Or maybe it's Katie. Life in it, like model life. I see this all the time, actor life. You see this all the time? Musician life? Yeah, people are like, oh, writing songs, 3 a.m., whatever comes to me, musician life. Come on now, really? Now, unless you're an animal, because if you're like doing something very dolphin-like at 3 a.m. and you're like, dolphin life, I'm into that. If you're a dolphin. If you're a dolphin. Or if, I think maybe a gorilla or a chimpanzee is probably tweeted. Dolphin, gorillas, you're, you're, you're sitting on that. You, do you remember that? Uh, you don't you need a what? point. Sadly, I do not remember that, Link. Yeah, it's weird, I don't, it's, it's, we do a lot, we Hashtag say a lot, and we seem pretty life. passionate about it. All right, Link, in August 2014, you once shared a rule mm. involving personal space on the subway. You said if two people are crammed so close together on the subway that their bodies are touching in more than two places, mm -hmm. something must happen. I, and my first thought is you must say something. You must acknowledge the closeness. But maybe I said you must keep silent. <laughs> I don't even know what I would have thought back then. But okay. right now I would say, you must keep silent. But you know what, I think I said you must acknowledge the touching. So I'm going with acknowledge the touching, but I'm a different man now. All right, let's watch the clip. If you are touching more than two places with an individual that you do not know, like uh, there's shoulder touch, there's a knee touch, and there's like a, a wrist touch because like we're slammed together in a, in a subway. It's kinda weird, we wouldn't say like this probably. In a, in a crowded subway, you might. I feel like at this point the rule is you have to talk to him. Hey man. But you should do it with an apologetic look on your I'm face. I'm sorry, where are you from? Hey, yeah, I'm, I actually live in the subway. <laughs> <laughs> and I got it right. All right, that's right. You and did, I, do, you, I would not speak to anyone now. I would not take my own rule. You didn't add the apologetic tone, but that was pretty good. I mean, you basically remembered it. You, you have to acknowledge it and talk to them. I don't know, I feel, I feel like, I, I guess I've grown as a person. Okay. And I got a point, which is more important. Give me one. I'm gonna give you one, but first I'm gonna plug this sweatshirt. Uh, Feel good, mythical morning. Yeah. This is you want to feel good in a sweatshirt, then get this nice mythical.com. You know, I was thinking a lot of people say watching the show makes them feel good. Yeah. I was like, we should put that on a shirt, and the shirt should feel good. Yeah, it's and very soft. We've done it. It's three dimensional. The lettering, it's not just printed, but like you can feel the feel goodness. Right. Pretty happy about it. It's great on a construction site too. Right. 
Do um, while biking at night. All right, you've given a number of parenting tips on this show. Uh, there's one thing you said, never do, oh no, you said you never do it with your kids because you believe it's bad parenting uh, and that dads who do it are quote losers. What is that thing? This is from August 2017. So it's not as far back as these other ones. Dads who do this thing are losers? Yep. You never do this with your kids. Dads who do it are losers. <laughs> I can, the thing is is that yeah. I don't know what part of my brain to go into. Right. I don't know if it's the part that I was actually saying something I think or the 99% of the time I'm just BSing. Boy, that's progress. 99% of the time he's BSing. I think it has something to do with like calling your child your like best friend or something like that. <laughs> I know that sounds harsh, but you're not, it's not your best friend, it's your son and you're the dad. They have friends, you have friends. I mean, you're, you have a friendly relationship. Did I say something like that? <laughs> Let's find out. That's pretty harsh. I've never really looked at my children's toys. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe in that. I believe that's bad parenting. When you get down on their level and you play with them, I've never. I've never thought that. Whenever I see a dad doing that, I'm like, yo, what a loser. Getting down on your kid's level and playing. Yeah, with them. I still believe that. Yeah, it's even harsher than what you guessed. You don't get a point. Uh, dang it, this is hard. <laughs> okay. Right. In August 2016, at one point on the show, you discussed the concept of the uncanny valley. Essentially, the closer someone resembles a human or something resembles a human, mm -hmm. the more humans are creeped out by that thing. You proposed a theory as to why humans would be creeped out by humanoid robots. What was the theory? This is a level of thinking that I didn't know I ever did. I think you just gotta go back to that place. That's what you did for the first one. You I, just, don't try to remember what you said, just think about what you would say I now. Do. I think it's that you're afraid of being intimate with something that's not really human. Play the clip. I think even more so, it's mate selection. I think deep down, whenever we look at something like a robot, we're asking ourselves, do I wanna mate with that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying consciously. I'm saying subconsciously, you, you, you're always thinking, do you want to mate with fill in the blank? I did not remember that. That is crazy. But I just thought about what I would have thought you about. You the I exact it. same thing. It's got, it, again, it's the concussion thing. It's like whenever I got hit in the head and I kept coming to, I kept saying the same thing. Hold on, I'm just coming to. Evidently I've hurt my left hip. No matter how many times I came to, I said the exact same thing. Well, I, there's, no, I'm, there's no way I'm gonna win this one. <laughs> um, in November of 2013. Oh, that's a long time ago. You and I each made our own mind maps, a pictorial representation of a set of goals. You remember that? Mm hmm Do you? Yeah, because you've got a question about it as well. <laughs> oh, okay. So I remembered it when I looked at the question. Oh. Your mind map set a list of more than 10 lifelong goals. How many of these goals can you remember? I'll accept three. I thought the mind map was a day in the life of, but you're saying it was, this is lifelong goals. Yeah. Fly an ultralight, visit Antarctica. What else would you have wanted to do? There's so many things that I wanna do. Since then you may have done one of them. This is 2013? Mm -hmm. Something with beans? Something with beans, he says. I think you need to be more specific. Like bathe in a giant thing of beans? Huh? Okay, those are your answers. So, uh, visit Antarctica, bathe in beans, and the first one? Fly an ultralight. Fly an ultralight, let's see. I wanna hunt for that treasure in the Rocky Mountains that we talked about. I would like to learn how to become a master cheese maker. I would like to be a mayor of a very small town at some point. Or the water tower. I would like to live on an island by myself for a, just a short period of time where I am trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and then when I come back, I am a superhero for hire. Uh, I would also, as Looks I a lot like the Flash, as I stated in in past uh, episodes of the two hundred year old person, I would like to live inside of a hollowed out tree at some point, and then I would like to die while performing amazing stunts at a monster truck rally uh, late in life. I've added the fact that I would also like to do research, intense research on renewable energy sources because I feel like that's because you have time for that. That's the key to the future. With everything else that you're not going to do, and in this part of my life where I am becoming a master cheese maker, I'm going to have a lot of milk that I'm dealing with, and I would like you to be a butter maker at that time, <laughs> and <laughs> we can go in fifty fifty, and uh, I'll make the cheese and you make the butter. It'll be called Rhett and Link's Dairy Farm. I just, there's just, I have too many things that I wanna do. I can't <laughs> narrow it down. I didn't even get one of them right. No, you didn't. I said Antarctica, which is an island. 
Well, no, it's not. It's a continent. But it is an island. An well, island it's continent. It's surrounded by water. It's an island continent just like Australia. Australia's not an island. But I wouldn't it? get a point anyway. I didn't get three. <sighs> yep, that's right. But you, but you remember the monster truck. Well, let's see if we can keep your streak alive, Link. Okay. You also made a mind map. Yes. Your mind map illustrated what you wanted to achieve in a single day. So that was why I thought that. So you went with a day, I went with a lifetime. Can you remember what was in the middle of your mind map? This is November 2013. Mine ended with monster trucks and that's the amazing thing that happened in that episode was that we were both, that, that was the overlap, was we were, we were both doing something with monster trucks and then I think I died in a monster truck accident. That's my answer. Died in a monster truck accident. The middle of your mind map was you dying in a monster <laughs> truck accident? That's all I can remember right now. Okay, let's watch the clip. Uh, I made my mind map and uh, here it is, right? Of course you can see right in the center, you have my eyeball and because I want to see today. You started with an eyeball? So the central idea of your eye, your, of your I today want to, I is want your to eyeball. I see today. I technically on, think, I mean, that's okay. If, if it works for you, man, just do it. You know, I don't wanna critique your mind map. I do wanna see today, but what happened to my monster truck death? Again, that was a you different- You are dead at the end of it, but I think that it was a different episode. But the thing that was super ironic was the fact that you also had cheese on your mind map. Oh. I had cheese and you had cheese. Oh. I do wanna see today. I think that's a great way to live. Uh, go ahead. All right. I gotta get one of these right. Believe it or not, Rhett, at one point you gave a strong opinion on what you think Tom Cruise's ball sack is like. <laughs> How did you describe Tom Cruise's ball sack in March of 2018? Not a wrinkle on it. Just as smooth you seem as a, confident as a about baby's this. bottom. It seems like you think about this often. Like you're not accessing a memory, but something that I mean, is just very not present for one you. Crease. Like if you dropped a drop of water on Tom Cruise's ball sack, it'd be like dropping water on a duck's back. It just, just. Tom Cruise's ball sack is hydrophobic. Be still. Boop, boop. All right, let's see if he's right. This celebrity gets laser treatment to smooth out wrinkles, remove hair, and correct discoloration of the testicles. Also nicknamed ball ironing. Here's why it is Tom Cruise, Rhett. Because this is, ur I, this is urban legend type stuff. This is something that comes out of Scientology, like somebody escapes and then they're like, and you know what else he does? <laughs> this. I think that Tom Cruise has got a tight ball sack. Let's, that, I mean, I, he's probably got the tightest ball sack of any 55 year old man or however old he is. I didn't, you didn't say tight, tight you said smooth. smooth, you said wrinkleless. Give me a point, but man. But you, rem you were remembering the ironing, and so that's why you thought, that, but I can't give you the point, because you didn't say tight. No, but it's so tight that it, it it's like, it's pulled tight over the testes, and it's smooth. There's not a wrinkle. But you didn't say the word tight. Just give me a point, I can't win. I'll give him half a point, because he didn't say. Well, if you get this wrong, you should automatically lose, because this is the easiest one that you've got. In really? September 2013, when explaining your opinion on why things are funny, you described laughter in a very specific way. You said laughter is like blank. Can you remember what you said laughter is like? I only remember this because it, it pops up occasionally. Right, this is one that we've, re unlike every other one, we've re-accessed this many times. Yeah, so I can't take credit for remembering this. I remember other people remembering it um, on a regular basis. But laughter is like farting out of your mouth. Play the clip. I think things are funny because, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the whole principle of comic relief. Yep. Tension builds up. Mm -hmm. You know, tension builds up in your body. And if it's, you know, if it's right in, the, in here. And, so, you know, I don't mean to go, I don't mean to go here, but. Uh, but you're going to. But you, you know, tension builds up and you fart. And then if you've, like, so laughter is like farting out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh Put that and on the t-shirt. Let me tell you right now. That would be funny. <laughs> I don't know why it would, but I can tell you right now. Uh, it's a release of tension. I Laughter think that's... is like a fart from your mouth. <laughs> it See, is. Put it on a t-shirt. It is. No, we I'm, never did. I'm gonna give you another half a point just because I'm I'm seeing the moment. What's, what's that that I was trying to do? See the moment? Be in the moment? See the now? I appreciate it, but that Whatever. doesn't give me more points than you. You got three out of four. You win the memory foam comb. Congratulations. Thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it Don't is. Don't forget about us. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. And, and we're from St. Augustine, Florida. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Pretty convincing. Click the top link to watch us play interactive memory games and good mythical more. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality is gonna land.
feel all the feels in the feel good mythical morning hoodie that feels really good. Available now at mythical.com.